And we're live. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in to another Pulse Pounding episode of the BAMP Podcast. And um, this time it's actually pretty special because uh, Steve Kenson is here once again to answer all of your questions about uh, Freedom City Third Ed. Thanks for joining us, Steve. I'm happy to do it. Glad to be here. <laughs> is anyone is anyone hearing an echo? No. Nope. Oh, no echoes. Okay, that's just me. All right, I'll just try to plow ahead. Um, <laughs> Okay, so in preparation for this, over the last week, I have uh, been asking people on Twitter and the Ronan Army if they had any questions about uh, about Freedom City Third Ed. So let's um, go to the Reddit thread on the Mutants and Masterminds subreddit. And um, first questions from our Reddit user Argos Griffin. Have there been any changes to the makeup of the team since Second Ed? And have any other teams emerged to subvert the league's influence? Um, yes, and not really, I guess, <laughs> would be accurate. Um, I mean, I assume by, by the team, they mean the Freedom League, and uh, yes, the Freedom League lineup has definitely changed. Uh, we have uh, added some new characters uh, like um, Centuria and Thunderbolt. Uh, some other Freedom League characters have retired. Um, uh, such as um, uh, the previous Raven, uh, Callie Summers, is now mayor of Freedom City um, and uh, has retired from superheroing. Um, the, the new Raven uh, is, is a, a character detail in Atlas of Earth Prime. He's uh, primarily active in New York City rather than Freedom City. Um, so yeah, some makeup of the Freedom League team has changed. Uh, we, we did not uh, add any um, new teams to Freedom City. We felt like the last thing Freedom City needed at this point was another team of superheroes. <laughs> I love how you phrase that, subvert them. I mean, it's like it's a question, like we're getting an actual question from Dr. Stratos or something. Right. And I found out what the echo was. Um, when you're doing a live broadcast, you should not have the broadcast open another window. Because then you will <laughs> hear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, um, from Reddit user Ducky Turret. I'm going to save that name and use it for a villain at some point. What is your favorite super or in favorite villain of this edition? I'm going to let somebody else take that one first. Chris? Well, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of all of Steve's creations, uh, and it's good to see so many of them back. And I was really happy to see so many of them get new art. I mean, I mean, not that the old art was bad, but there's some really spectacular pieces in here. Like uh, the new conundrum piece is is is, is mm -hmm. popping into my brain first and foremost, and uh, and 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 it's good to see that you know Steve is Steve is Steve has done some things to the heroes. Some bad things have happened to some of the villains, for instance. You know, like like poor Devil Ray, <laughs> poor guy. You know, and 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 and, and Commander Kraken is back. So my my you know, and Doctor Simeon. Oh, Doctor Simeon's there. My universe is complete. Doctor. Simeon. Oh God, I have to rep for Doctor Simeon. Um, what happened to uh, Sea Devil? Devil Ray. Devil um, Ray. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Devil Ray discovered that it was uh, a bad idea to mess with weird ancient artifacts that you dig up <laughs> in Cyclopean ruins at the bottom of the ocean. Um, <laughs> you would think that would be obvious, wouldn't you? You would think, but sometimes villains not so smart about these things. Okay. There are entire lines of books where people keep messing yeah, with those yes, things. Yeah, that's it. Done yet. Yeah, sorry. All right. Um, now, Ducky Turret, uh, still loving that name. He's got a bunch more questions, and I'm just going to ramble them off all at once um, yeah. just to get them out there. Cause they're, they're be, yeah, lightning round, because we might be on this one for a while if I don't. So hang on. Um, and I, I lost the exact. There it is. All right. What was the hardest to achieve? What was the most fun part? What do you hope players will enjoy about Freedom City Thread? What inspired you for the architecture, size, shape of the city? Any advice for beginning GMs and new players? Go. Okay, gosh. Um, let's see. Um, you know, the, the hardest part of the, the project, unfortunately, was the length of time it took us to finally get it done. Um, and and that, was, that was entirely the fault of um, Green Ranin having a number of other uh, sort of prime opportunities uh, that came along uh, and uh, that uh, unfortunately kind of shifted Freedom City's production to the, the back burner. Um, 
And uh, that, that was the hardest part because we, we really very much, I especially really very much wanted to get the, the book finished and out there. Uh, and, um, but when, you know, Wizards of the Coast says, hey, you want to design some D&D books? Um, and, you know, um, when, um, you know, Matt Mercer says, hey, you want to design a setting book for my campaign world? Um, you know, uh, those, those are hard opportunities to, to pass up. So um, uh, there, were, there were a lot of things that kept us busy uh, with other things. Um, and I guess, you know, uh, as far as um, advice with Freedom City goes, um, it's, you know, uh, I, I've always said, you know, I mean, it's, it's your setting once you've, you know, got your hands on it. Um, you know, do what you want with it. Use use what inspires you. Ignore the stuff that doesn't inspire you. Change stuff if you want to. We give you all kinds of options to do that. You know, plug characters in, take characters out. Um, you know, uh, use bits and pieces of the setting to build your own, you know, city if you want. Um, whatever you want. It's all yours. You know, it's it's not like you have to cleave to some uh, imaginary continuity, you know, in your own campaign, as far as, as how you run Freedom City, you know, use it however you like. Um, you know, it's it's a, a really big um, sandbox to play in. So, and you don't have to use all of it by any stretch of imagination. Okay, um, fair Did enough. The highlights there. I think I I don't think I enough covered everything, but okay, no, it's all good. Um, let's see, what is Sonic up to? Uh, Sonic is still solo heroing uh, on and off, um, but uh, like a number of characters, we decided to um, shift the spotlight away from a bunch of characters um, with the assumption that for some of them, you know, they were just off doing their own thing at this point, but it wasn't really super important to um, add even more heroes to the setting. Uh, the one thing we, we wanted to do was kind of open up the sense that Freedom City could use a few heroes uh, rather than the, the sense that they were full up. Um, you know, so uh, a lot of characters like the, um, a lot of the students from Claremont Academy, you know, we kind of just leave open as to, you know, where they are, what they're doing. You know, some of them may be solo heroing off somewhere, you know, or who knows, traveling other dimensions. You know, but they're they're off doing something, um, and you know that way you can use those characters if you have favorites from earlier editions or earlier source books that you want to have hanging around. Um, but you know you don't you're not we didn't want to feel the sense that they were just all hanging out in Freedom City looking for something to do. <laughs> Down at the Denny's eating cheese fries, just waiting. You know. Right. Seeing what the night brings them. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Got a question from Max Traver from over on the Banff Podcast Discussion Group. And mm -hmm. if you're listening to Banff Podcast and you like what we do here, uh, check out the Banff Podcast Discussion Group on Facebook, where we, um, uh, you know, we talk about Banff some more. So anyway, there's my feeble plug. And Max asks, is there absolutely no chance of getting an M&M product like this published with icon stats? Um... Well, there's certainly never going to be a Mutants and Masterminds product published with Icon Stats. I think maybe uh, he was thinking like a, a Freedom City sort of city book. If, if he means a... Well... So hmm. ba basically, he said, Steve, you've done one city book. Just go out and do another one quickly. Come on. Right, <laughs> right. I, if, no. I guess if he means, um, am I going to do a Freedom City-like setting book for Icons, the answer is no. Um, I don't really plan to for a number of reasons. Um, one being like Abe pointed out, I've already done two, basically, you know, Freedom City, and I did a lot of work on Emerald City. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily want to do something for icons that's just, uh, you know, uh, Freedom City Light or, you know, um, Freedom City Redux or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, and uh, my my approach with icons has always been to make um, icons very very modular and focused primarily on adventures um, and 
So any setting as far as icons goes has always been sort of just implied elements that show up in different adventures that you can use or you can ignore however you want um, and mix and match however you want. Um, but I don't think there's going to be a big need for, you know, um, you know, an imaginary city book for icons that, you know, provides a lot of maps and contexts and things like that. If everybody wants one, they're going to have a Star City book, uh, a pretty cool one. And I think that, that sounds familiar. I might know something about that one. Right. And I think it provides a nice, you know, sort of fictional context for icons, you know. I mean, or, you know, they can use Freedom City and icons if they want to. Nothing really stop them. Yeah, I think that's what Max maybe was asking was, are we ever going to see Freedom City for icons? And it sounds like the answer to that is no. Probably not. Um, you know, I mean, if there was a huge demand for it, I guess I'd talk to Green Redeem about it. But, um, uh, you know, if, if Max wants to start a, you know, um, a, a petition, <laughs> right, I, there, there looks like there'd be a lot of people who are willing to shell out money for that, then, yeah, I'd talk to Green Redeem about it. Okay, okay. Um, Another question from uh, Reddit user Lemonfooted, another good villain name. Um, after making previous versions of the Freedom City book at a time when TV and film didn't influence the perception of superheroes in popular culture anywhere near as much, did this shift have much of an effect on the way you tried to present a setting like Freedom City, its cast of characters, or significantly influence the type of stories you told? Um, a little bit, not a lot. Um, Freedom City is still very much, uh, you know, sort of four color comic homage setting, but um, certainly, you know, trends in um, comics and superhero media had some influence. I mean, I, I you know, certainly say that, you know, Centuria uh, timed really well with uh, the Supergirl TV show. Um, we decided to include her because she was foreshadowed as a a future element of Freedom City, you know, some 10 years ago. Um, and mm -hmm. just certain any listeners who might uh, not have read the book yet or remember her from the foreshadowing, uh, could you bring us up to speed on? Uh, uh, Centuria is basically um, the, the Centurions. Uh, the Centurion was Freedom City's greatest superhero, and in many ways, they're sort of Superman analog. Um, and Centuria is his daughter from an alternate timeline. Um, so uh, she is many ways very much a Supergirl, Power Girl uh, kind of car homage character. Um, and uh, she happens to dovetail really well with uh, the, uh, the new Supergirl TV series in terms of, you know, her style as a character. Um, so that was a, uh, I don't know if that was an influence per se, but it was it's certainly something that was an interesting coincidence. Okay, cool. I was say, if, you, if you wanted to uh, make it more like the movies, you should just redesign everybody's costume to be black, and that would right. have done the job. So, you know, that yeah. would have been. Yeah, and less, <laughs> less form fitting and. Yeah, you know, that's more... kind of bag, baggy leather, kind of black. Yeah, it'd been perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more sort of, you know, um, you know, waffle fabrics and. Yeah, yeah, you know, go have texture. Go have texture. Texture and things like that. Sure. <laughs> That'll pretty much cover it. <laughs> And there uh, is a reason that superhero costumes look the way they do. Oh, it is so yeah. the artists will be able to draw them yeah. easily over and over again. Yeah. For every for everyone who is constantly complaining about why do they look this way, that's the reason. That's why. Well, unless, unless, hmm. unless you're Steve Ditko. Right. Or George Perez. That's true. I've always I've always said that you know uh, superhero games should have a have a disadvantage called George Perez costume. Uh, <laughs> oh wow! Because yeah. your character was visually designed by George Perez, and no other artist is actually going to be able to draw you <laughs> because your costume is just way too complicated. Next question, uh, Reddit user LL Brother. Uh, what's going on with some of the characters we didn't hear about in the new book? Like Pseudo, Sonic, we covered already, Maestro, and Hiroshima Shadow. Uh, let's see. Maestro is going to be in Rogue's Gallery, um, and we have an interesting update for him. Um, and there are a couple of other updated characters in Rogue's Gallery. Um, but once again, a bunch of characters, we've just decided to move them off stage and uh, kind of uh, allow game masters to decide for themselves what's up with them, if anything. Um, I got to imagine that given 
uh, everything that's going on in the galaxy um, post um, Emerald City and uh, Cosmic Handbook that uh, Pseudo's got plenty to do um, out in space as far as that goes. <clears throat> um, and uh, I think that's probably true of a number of characters. Um, but other characters, we just, you know, uh, we kind of quietly retired them. Um, and uh, there's an opportunity to, if, you know, Game Master wants to use them in their own game, by all means. We just wanted to narrow the focus and focus on some other characters. Okay, fair enough. Um, switching to questions from Ronan Army. Um, this is one just came in yesterday from username Rain on the Sun. Uh, is Lady Anarchy on the outs with the Tyranny Syndicate? She doesn't get a stat block or a mention beyond what she's done in Viridian City. Did she decide to stay there and go solo? Did she get a replacement like Lady Liberty? It's a syndicate out for her blood after the Chaos Storm. I well, actually speak to this one. That Lady Anarchy doesn't get along super well with, you know, I mean, she's by definition not a real great team player. <laughs> You know, uh, she's she's kind of rebellious by nature. Um, but then on the other hand, I think the Tyranny Syndicate's alliance is pretty tenuous on the best of days. Um, and they're pretty much all looking for, you know, ways to stab each other in the back, given the, the opportunity. So I imagine the Syndicate would work with Lady Anarchy uh, and probably even consider her a member potentially still, as long as it's advantageous for them to do so. And... Uh, they think that she's sufficiently powerful and dangerous to be both useful and too dangerous to have as an enemy at the moment. Uh, but I think it's up to you know game master to decide how, what's the most fun uh, you know for their game. I think it'd be interesting to have the um, syndicate recruit some Earth Prime heroes to help them overthrow Lady Anarchy because they think she's too dangerous, um, and then they have to decide if they want to work with the lesser of two evils. On that tangent, uh, Ran the Sun also asks you to please do more Tyranny Syndicate stuff in general because they're pretty awesome. Oh well, before before we leave his first question, mm -hmm. there's also a bit of an update about what about what the Spirit of Anarchy is up to coming up in Rogues Gallery because mm -hmm. the Spirit of a the Spirit of Anarchy is a springboard to the arch enemy of the new Lady Liberty in the uh, Freedom City universe. Okay, sure. and what, when is Rogues Gallery coming out? Or is this, is this going to be a weekly release, or is this going to be a big villain book? Uh, no, this is the compiled book, um, okay. and it's going to have all of the uh, PDF content as well as uh, some uh, new additional material, the stuff we've been talking about. And that's in production right now. Like the okay. villain I just mentioned. So even if you bought the weekly releases, go ahead and pick it up because there's going to be new stuff. And yeah, there'll be some additional stuff. Yes. Release date is TBD, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as it's done, which hopefully will be fairly soon now. Okay, cool. Uh, next question from username Sistrike. I'd be interested to know why several characters had a magic makeover, so to speak, for the update, and what led to that decision, along with what led to the decision for a particular routes Megastar and Seven have gone down. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, the, actually, the two things are kind of related. Um, so um, Seven is in an uh, unusual situation. Uh, in that uh, she uh, very briefly graduated to be Master Mage um, and uh, took on Eldritch's uh, role. Um, then, um, in fairly quick succession, um, uh, fought off an attack uh, by Una's uh, Netherworld dimension um, and defeated Una in single combat. Um, unfortunately, uh, by uh, certain laws of magic uh, in, in that part of them in the multiverse, essentially. Uh, her uh, defeat of Una basically also gave her rulership of the netherworld. Um, and uh, Seven, quite unintentionally, essentially became a Dark Lord. Um, and um, the way magic uh, works in the, the Earth Prime multiverse, uh, when you're a, a powerful master of the mage, your choice is either to defend natural law or bend it to your will uh, and essentially uh, take over the universe. Um, and so Seven was given a universe that she was already pre in charge of. Um, and uh, she uh, had to either give up being master mage of Earth or incorporate Earth into her new cosmic domain, which she obviously didn't want to do. Um, so now she's uh, stuck being queen of a dark netherworld uh, that she's trying to essentially divest herself of 
Um, but it's awfully hard, it turns out, to uh, teach the inhabitants of a dark universe who have been ruled by a despotic sorcerer for all of known history uh, to be independent and peaceful. Um, and uh, especially to do it without coercion, any kind of coercion, uh, while also slowly surrendering all of your mystical power um, in the process. So Seven has a lot of challenges to deal with uh, right now. Uh, and uh, her departure uh, leaves Earth without a Master Mage um, for the first time uh, in uh, a long period of recorded history. Um, and so although uh, it's not uh, stated outright, folks have obviously noticed a lot of bad magical things are starting to happen in the world. Um, and all of a sudden there are dead villains coming back to life uh, and <laughs> mystical villains getting weird makeovers and old villains making deals with the devil for a new lease on life and, you know, other sorts of things like that. Um, and one could infer uh, from that that um, there's a problem in the magical universe. And uh, if uh, somebody doesn't get it under control, it might get a lot worse. Okay, is this something we'll be seeing more of in future releases, or is it uh, just a hook for uh, GM to use? Right now, it's just a hook for game masters to use if they want, but we might do something with it at some point. Okay, cool, cool. Um, this sort of sounds reminiscent. Um, uh, Seven sort of reminded me of uh, uh, when Johnny Storm conquered the negative zone and wound mm -hmm. up having to rule it. Yep. Okay, um, next question came in today at 4.21 a.m. Uh, from username Universe 8. Um, I'm not sure if this has ever been addressed, but I was always curious what Pantheon Siren belonged to. Will more information about her and her divine associates be available? Uh, Siren is a voodoo goddess, or technically a voodoo lua, um, and uh, her she belongs to the, the, the pantheon of, of um, uh, Haitian and uh, New Orleans uh, voodoo, essentially. She's a sea goddess, or sea spirit. Oh, and Fuzzy Boots uh, answered 10 minutes later, basically saying just that, so yeah. Um, Okay, so, and then Fuzzy Boots had his own question. Uh, as per this thread, what happened to Sudo? We already covered that. Yeah. And why are Maestro and Hirosh Machado no longer with the Crime League? Is there a story uh, behind that? We, we addressed Maestro in uh, Rogue's Gallery, um, but basically he's gone independent for uh, reasons you'll see uh, in uh, his uh, revive, his new update. Um, and Hirosh Machado's character, we just moved off stage. Um, honestly, he wasn't all that interesting. Uh, okay. You know, so he might still be around, either that or he's just in prison, you know, or Hero's finally figured out how to depower him or something. Okay, okay. Um, and last question came in today, uh, early this morning before 9 o'clock, from username JM Barry. What happened to the rest of the alternate teens? Elite's accounted for, obviously, but the others seem to just disappear after Wu Bank graduates and Magni and Nereid break up. Well, we know that uh, Elite is the new Raven um, and uh, has, after training under um, uh, Duncan and Callie Summers, you know, took up uh, the Raven mantle with, with Callie's blessing uh, so that she could retire. Um, but as far as the other alternate teams, uh, we've pretty much left their fates uh, vague enough for the Game Master to do pretty much whatever they want with it. Again. They could be off traveling other dimensions with Navigatrix. Uh, they might be uh, still together as a team operating somewhere. Um, but we just didn't want a bunch of characters just hanging around Freedom City all the time. Um, so they're elsewhere doing stuff. OK, fair enough. So they actually got to mention in my, um, uh, one of my villains, if you remember. Uh, the um, dark oh, crikey, the microverse villain. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. They, in, they, they, they had a little minor, minor cameo with Wupan and uh, yeah. Navcatrix in there as well. So, yes, they, yeah. they are they were still around at that point in time, wherever they still yeah. are now. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, and God's help us all, Wupan's is you know, old enough to legally drink now, so. <laughs> 
Mass hysteria, dogs and cats living together. <laughs> okay, um, that is all the questions I had. All right. Um, let's see, uh, Chris, you talked about Conqueror Worm. Was, was that before the show started or in terms of... I like think your... so, yes. Yes, okay. I think that, I think that was, we started. Well, uh, since I've brought it up awkwardly, why don't we just dive into that? That's uh, you had you say you had a couple, you had like two or four pages in the book you wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, I can. I'll talk about my two pages, and then I will, I will, I will gladly step aside for the guy that wrote the other three hundred and ninety <laughs> odd pages. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, yeah. Um, uh, I, I always thought Freedom's Most Wanted was one of the better books we ever did, and and it was such a great opportunity to take some of these wonderful evocative one-line descriptions of villains that Steve had come up with and just run with them. And, uh, and I had such a great fun being able to do that with so many villains. And, uh, I thought two of the, if I can fairly judge, I thought two of the better ones were the conqueror worm and doc holiday. And, uh, back when, uh, this third edition of freedom city was in the planning stages, uh, I don't know if it was John or Steve or some combination that came up with the idea of updating those two guys. And with my usual super confident self, I sort of went, uh, guys, um, if it's okay, can I take a shot at updating them? It's, 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 it's okay. If it's not, it's all right. And they said, yes. And, uh, they said, well, what's your idea for updating them? And I, I, I pitched the idea of the new doc holiday being a guy that had that like unwillingly will transform into some horrible avatar of whatever day on the calendar that is sort of like a holiday werewolf. And I got back the best note I've ever gotten from a developer. You had me at Holiday Werewolf. <laughs> so I took so I took that idea and ran and, and ran with it and uh, and I update uh, updated Doc Holiday to the new Hol Holiday Werewolf version. And uh, then uh, Conqueror Worm. Oh gosh, has, I, you know he was always one of my favorites just because you know we we've got so many great shout outs to all these like great classic. DC villains. I even got to do like my Rainbow Raider homage in uh, Rogues Gallery, but you know, and, and all of uh, all of the various Ravens um, enemies, we never really had that like demonically charismatic Joker-like figure. And so I was a, a Conqueror Worm is kind of like that mixed with uh, one of my all-time favorite films, Witchfinder General, and, mm -hmm. and the the central Vincent Price character from that, and. Um, so, you know, he was just so nasty and terrible. I, re I had originally killed him off in the late 60s. So, you know, the thought of bringing him back as part of all this really bad mystical things that are going on and making him, like, way more powerful, too good to pass up on. And he's in there. He's even nastier than before, if that's possible. So, so yeah. So th those, two are, those two are mine. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really thrilled because, you know, I've always been this huge Steve Kinson fan. And I remember, I remember when, I, when the first Freedom City was just a – word file on my computer sitting there thinking, well, you know, if you work really, really hard, someday you'll make it into the Freedom City book. And, you know, after 15 years, achievement unlocked. I'm <laughs> such a, and I, I can't be anything other than a super happy nerd about this. <laughs> I'm so, I've been nerding out the last 24 hours. I'm finally in the Freedom City book. Well, cool. All right. Um, I don't know if I can follow that. Steve, do you have a favorite character you want to talk about or? Uh, oh, gosh. Um, too many to choose from? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I'm very fond of, of most of the characters uh, in uh, Freedom City. I'm really happy with um, having Centuria in the book. Um, and uh, I'm really happy with um, the, I'm really happy with, you know, some of the developments of, of the characters and how things have, you know, come together. Um, the way we've been able to um, play around with, you know, characters like Johnny Rocket and Bowman maturing as you know now much more sort of senior members of the the freedom league and now uh, you know centuria and the new lady liberty and thunderbolt are much more sort of the new junior rookie you know members of the team so there's a bit of an inversion of you know some of the the old freedom city stuff um and that's a lot of fun um and uh i'm i'm particularly happy with um the the new version of uh, Toy Boy, um, who's uh, super creepy, and um, has, great art on that. Yeah, and the the artwork totally like creeps everyone out. <laughs> so um, you know the the very fact that um, when um, we were going through the the initial when the initial art was coming back in, 
Um, and uh, everyone like on staff was just like, wow, that's like super creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was really happy with that. Um, Hey, uh, reading over on the Freedom City 3 E thread on Roman Army, um, someone was asking about what happened with Collapsar. Uh, he had an entry and something happened to him in, in the Cosmic Handbook mm -hmm. back in 2015, right? Yeah, we had a follow-up uh, adventure series planned to um, basically deal with, the, to basically wrap up the Collapsar storyline. Um, and uh, they basically, Emerald City Knights, um, didn't suggest that that uh, adventure series was super viable as a product. Um, so uh, it unfortunately remains unfinished at the moment. Um, we're still thinking about you know ways in which we can we can represent it uh, in an effective way. We still got we still have some content. And obviously, we've got the whole you know sort of master um, outline to it. Um, but um, you know, there was intended to be basically an adventure where the, the heroes finally, you know, directly confront Collapsar and have the opportunity to, to deal with it. Um, and hopefully it's something that we can actually um, produce one day. Well, I know, you know, um, in the past you've expressed some uh, desire to not do uh, crowdfunding campaigns in the future, but something like that mm -hmm. might be perfect for uh, that sort of thing. Possibly. You know, and that's that's one thing to you know consider as far as that goes. It would certainly tell us whether it would certainly tell us whether or not there was an audience for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes the answer is not. But <laughs> now that's that's the beauty of crowdfunding. You're like, hey, who's interested? And, oh, yeah. okay. Well, um, looking at the Freedom City Three E thread, Lone Wolf Twenty Three says, "I'm disappointed to see Daku Taku was not in the third third ed book. I was curious to see how he changed in the time skip." Uh, yeah, Daku Taku was another one of those characters that we kind of retired, um, largely because um, he grew up. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, grew, and, a neck, grew a neck beard, got a job. Yeah, he, well, uh, my, that, that make with with his robots, he could make more money legitimately than criminals. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's kind of the quiet assumption. I think we may have even mentioned it in you know some backstory material um, that he basically eventually went uh, legit um, and you know before he could um, get a criminal record as an adult um, <laughs> that he was smart enough to you know basically uh, go legit and discovered he could make a whole <laughs> ton of money um, you know and so he runs some tech company uh, <laughs> nowadays I mean and you know of course Game masters can certainly decide that you know Dako Taku, being the you know super genius that he is, was smart enough to realize that you know it was a good idea to at least appear to go legit, in order to you know make sure his criminal activities were were secret at this point, um, and there could be a whole storyline you know around you know Dako Taku secretly doing all kinds of criminal stuff behind the scenes, but. You know, realizing that the big, you know, showy stuff was just a bad idea. Yeah, be, now, now you're making the new generation Lex Luthor. Exactly. Yeah. If, sure. if and if he has this obsession with Centuria, so be it. I don't know. I'm kind of in love with the idea of doing like a middle aged Doc Otaku that's like standing around a pair of cargo shorts and a t shirt and a comb over, you know, talking about where to get good deals on aluminum siding. <laughs> I think we have to wait a few years for that. <laughs> I'm, all right. I'm following that idea away still. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. It looks like Omega Girl um, answered this one, but King Snarf was asking. That's uh, Crystal, by the way. Crystal, Crystal Fraser, yes. Um, asking about Lady Liberty's nemesis, Madame Guillotine, and apparently she'll be showing up in the Rogues Gallery collection. Uh, can yep, you guys give give us any tidbit about what's going on with her these days, or is that all saved for a future release? Yes, yes, that's one of mine. That's one of mine, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, well, f well, yes, well, cat's out of the bag then, I guess. Yes, uh, it turns out that, uh, that Madame Guillotine is possessed by the spirit of anarchy now, and she's much, 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 much greater menace than she was before. And uh, she's also under the delusion that it's not really the spirit of anarchy. She believes in her own self-righteous mind that she is the true heir of the spirit of liberty, and the new Lady Liberty is an imposter. 
and and a new and, or, or an usurper, and so as if they didn't have enough reason to hate each other right off the bat, the Madame Guillotine is somewhat obsessed with destroying this new pretender to this righteous power that she's inherited. Okay, cool, and that'll be in the Rose Gallery collection, so keep an eye out for that. Yes, and I've seen the color art on it, and it's it's fabulous. I can't I can't wait for other people to see that one. Okay, uh, looking through the thread, Gamma the Atom Smasher got cured, and uh, Crystal dresses that. Um, let's see. Uh, Johnny Rocket has a daughter who's also his clone, but that's not mentioned in the book. Yes, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. Should be. Okay, cool, cool. Um, scanning, scanning. I think I, um, all the threads I put out, I mean, I've gotten to all those questions. Um, uh, this okay, is I, I've got a question. For hey, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, go. with Kelly being the mayor of Freedom City, has Freedom <clears throat> City become friendlier to superheroes, or has she seen enough devastation that she's kind of like trying to keep it safer than it was before? Well, Freedom City is still pretty friendly to superheroes. Um, the the big um, sort of thing that Freedom City is mostly recovering from is um, having to deal with uh, a, a number of there are a number of alien refugees on Earth uh, for a period of time after the fall of the Lower Republic um, and um, the when the Stellar Imperium uh, seized power. Um, and uh, they were basically um, sort of corralled on Star Island for a while, um, but that proved to be a very imperfect and temporary solution, and um, eventually uh, Daedalus uh, resettled uh, the, some of the refugees in uh, a, a new colony uh, on one of Saturn's moons, um, but uh, it still is a fair amount of sort of lingering xenophobia uh, on Earth um, for the, the sudden influx of, of um, you know, if you'll pardon the expression, illegal aliens. Um, and uh, there's still at least a modicum of uh, potentially dangerous alien technology um, still hanging around that has found its way into the black market and, you know, been stolen or copied uh, or whatnot. Um, and so um, Freedom City is still dealing with some of the after effects of that, which interestingly enough is another weird um, synergy with the Supergirl TV series, actually. <laughs> All right. Um, somebody in the thread mentioned that there was uh, some mention in the book of uh, Preserver Stones and some adventures, a uh, group of heroes preventing some bad guys from getting them. Yep, that's um, the uh, aforementioned um, cosmic um, adventure that almost happened but didn't. Dealing with uh, Collapsar that we haven't published yet. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess if folks want to see that, um, you know, write Green Run and let them know. It sounds like a pretty interesting sort of infinity. Uh, yeah, infinity a lot of people novel. tell us that they'll, you know, buy an adventure series like that. We'll sort of give some serious thought to ways we can do it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, there you go, guys, from Steve's mouth. If you're interested in seeing that adventure, um, please express yourself, uh, you know, Green Ronin social media and Ronin Army, and uh, if they see enough response, something could happen. So, and, and if it just so happened that Ronin had an idea to get adventures out to the people soon, not saying they are, not saying they don't, if you folks bought them, that would certainly help. That, that was most beneficial. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is the, the business of exchanging money for uh, for written gaming materials. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. Um, uh, is there anything else on, Green, on uh, Freedom City we want to talk about or, you know, stuff that maybe hasn't been brought up as much? Um, I'm sure you're getting a little tired of doing, you know, the, the promotion push for the book, Steve. But uh, are, there any, are there any questions you haven't been asked about Freedom City? Gosh. Um... No, I don't think. Um, I mean, it, they, the most common one I, I, I hear is, you know, where's my favorite character or what happened to this character? <laughs> um, and uh, it, I totally understand, you know, where people are coming from, where in terms of their favorite characters, you know, are concerned. Um, and a lot of it really just came down to the book was only so big. Uh, and um, we didn't want to just um, redo 
second edition Freedom City with third edition stats and say, you know, oh, and by the way, in the last 11 years, nothing's changed whatsoever. Um, so uh, we um, gave a lot of thought to, you know, whether or not we were going to include certain characters and how we were going to include some other characters from the considerable body of work that the second edition um, setting built up. Um, and there were a lot of um, cool villain concepts uh, that showed up in other books that really, you know, deserve to be revisited. Um, others, like I said, not so much um, that it was probably best to just kind of quietly move them off stage. Um, and um, we wanted to um, thin out the ranks of uh, Freedom City's superheroes uh, to make it a bit more manageable uh, as far as that went to not necessarily have, you know, the, um, you know, Claremont Academy class of, you know, 2010, you know, all hanging around, um, you know, looking for work. Um, as far as that went. So, you know, uh, you know, all I can say is that, you know, if, if your favorite character is not in the book, then by all means, feel free to update them and use them, you know, and I, I won't say that we won't ever, you know, bring those characters back, but, uh, you know, it's going to be the finding the right opportunity to do it. Yeah, Steve, I know I asked this earlier. I think the question was, he's just off stage, but I had a buddy who used to play um, Megastar in our Freedom City Second Ed campaign. Uh, he's just kind of, uh, you know, off wandering the earth like Kane from Kung Fu, we're doing his own thing, or do we have a plot line for what um, happened to Megastar Megastar is actually going to appear in Rogue's Gallery. Oh, he's a bad guy now. Okay. Uh, well, that depends on who you ask. <laughs> he doesn't think so. <laughs> so, he's, uh, so he's a Marvel bad guy. But, um, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Megastar is, is one of the characters we are updating in Rogue's Gallery. Okay, cool, cool. That is good to know. Um, well, I am thinking we should wrap up. We've hit all the questions I've got. Um, any other releases, any other books you want to talk about before we uh, call it a show? Well, I've got a lot to say about Freedom City. <laughs> uh, Jacob, please go ahead. Well, first of all, uh, so we've been we've been talking about a lot about the city itself and the characters. I actually want to talk a little about the book, uh, well, at least the PDF. Mm. The, PD, the PDF I got. I really like the setup. I really like how the opening is done, like a city brochure, mm -hmm. and then you get and then you get to the rest of the you know talking about the city itself, and you have a secrets chapter which is pretty nice, just like you had with uh, Emerald City. So you can have a lot of player information. You, mm -hmm. you can handle up this stuff with the player information, and the GM can keep their notes as well. So I thought that was that was really nice. Uh, in terms of a couple of specifics, you know, I, I really liked how you're handling Centuria with her very, very much the television Supergirl aspect mm -hmm. and, you know, bringing in some new characters like uh, Tom Cypress, who has that uh, very um, so, um, Trying to remember Who's the sort of name. Solomon, Solomon Grundy. Grundy. Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy kind of thing. Hulk, yeah. you know, hulking, swampy guy thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, page 55, the food trucks. <laughs> oh, my. Where did you come up with these names? Uh, these I, just, um, I actually wrote that piece uh, while I was at Gen Con. Um, oh man, you one year and it was all food trucks, um, and I was like, "Oh yeah," I'm like, "Freedom City must have food trucks." I I, <sighs> I, I have to I have to spoil these for everyone because they are wonderful. So. so the food trucks of Freedom City, Falafel Tower, the Fat Mobile, um, Fat and Salt, Freedom Fries, the Soul Van. Sweet Chariot. Those, those, those are just wonderful names. Those, those are great. You did a great job. Um, in terms of one thing I did not like, page 23. Beautiful, beautiful piece of art of Centurion overlooking Freedom City. Did Centurion develop powers to phase through his cape? Because his legs are going straight through that cape. Yeah. 
Someone needed to catch that. Just a little artist gripe on my part. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a gorgeous piece otherwise. Maybe he has holes in his cape you don't know about. Yeah. I'm <laughs> some kind of weird phantom ray thing. Yeah, maybe. For... <laughs> but yeah, the, otherwise this 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 book is a beautiful piece of art. The, you've got you've got a lot of updated art and it's gorgeous. One of one of the things that I didn't like about the previous Freedom City was that uh, there were several characters who weren't so much in costumes as they were in signature clothing. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they they just had a stylized outfit they were wearing. Now you know you've got you know Johnny Rocket is actually looking like he's in a costume and that's mm -hmm. great and you know. Just a lot of the a lot of the updated art is beautiful. I I, yeah, it was nice to I congratulate you on that. Thank you. I'm very happy with it. And that's pretty much what I have to say about that. Hey, how about you? I have no chance to to read it through. So I'm I this is why it's all good. This is I'm learning all this sexual stuff and looking forward to actually getting to read it. So this is fantastic. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Oh yeah, I'm, I, it's Fred, the second edition of Freedom City book was definitely one of my favorite books ever as a setting book so an update for this is it's gonna be spectacular so yeah massive looking forward to it mm -hmm. uh one of the other things i should point out to to our listeners is this is very much the freedom city book the second edition freedom city book pretty also covered the world of of the freedom universe um whereas uh this book focuses entirely on Freedom City. If you want to know more about the world, then you want to get the Atlas of Earth Prime. And if you want to know more about the cosmos, you're going to want to get the Cosmic Handbook. Right. Uh, the, only th the only thing you're really missing now for to complete uh, a, a free the Freedom Universe would be a Dimension Book, up updating, updating the worlds of freedom mm -hmm. to, yeah. to third edition. Unsurprisingly, that is a concept we have talked about. <laughs> yeah, the Earth Eight guy needs work, so yeah, yeah, that would be a, be a good thing to do. <laughs> I think an entire Earth Eight chapter would be yeah, definitely. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> at least absolutely. with full, lots of full lots color of art, very, big big write up on Earth Eight. Yes, yes. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm just kidding. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm joking. Yeah. Damn dirty apes. <laughs> Okay, um, guys, anything else? Chris, any closing thoughts? Well, we were having a discussion uh, not too long ago where, where Jacob was expressing his frustration with, with superheroes that never really seemed to change, never really to go, to go anywhere. And the thought popped into my head, and we ran out of time for me to say it at the time, but I guess everything works out in its way. And the first thing popped in my head was uh, how, you know, this is, this is obviously the third edition of Freedom City, and it's something that's special to me and I can't even imagine how close it is to Steve's heart, mm -hmm. but you know, this wonderful special creation of his, he's allowed it to grow and expand and change and evolve and become something, something markedly different than it was when it was started. And to me, you know, if we were looking for the very definition of a brave creator, that's willing to allow his creation to be something more than what it was when it came out, Steve was the first person that I, that, that popped into my mind. So I think, I think he deserves recognition for that. And, while while we're semi publicly, I just want to briefly and nerdily say thank you, Steve, for letting me uh, ride in the margins of the free of, of the history of your wonderful universe. It's been it's been it's been wonderful, my friend, and it's pleasure. been an honor and a pleasure. My pleasure. It, yeah, I mean it's it's been really a lot of fun watching Freedom City develop over the years. I, I have to say, when I I first was working on it, I had no idea that I would be like talking about it on a podcast 15 years later and, you know, uh, about how it developed, so. Yeah, it's one of the few games, well, I mean, there was an awful lot of stuff in the D20 boom that we just never saw once the D20 boom evaporated and mm -hmm. the city has, has had the legs to uh, endure. Yeah. It's like, the, the irony being as well that the, uh, obviously the, um, the original source material from DC Comics and Marvel, they pretty much try to say as static as possible because they don't want to upset anybody by, you know, destroying Stark Tower or, you know, the Fantastic Four building falls over or something like that. So <laughs> this is nice to see a development of a superhero universe where you actually see characters move from, you've got, a, you've got the, like a DC Legacy thing going on. We see one character move in, move, go out, do this. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, in all fairness to Marvel, they have tried to change things in the last year or two. I mean, Tony Stark is now disembodied AI. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Doom was trying to be a hero, and um, 
I could go on and on. Um, well, I mean, comics universes always have, you know, the, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't mm -hmm. problem of, you know, either nothing changes and everybody complains about how the universe is so static and unchanging and, or they change things and everybody is like, what, how dare you, you changed my favorite thing. <laughs> now, um, so, you know, it, it's, they, I don't, I don't envy, <laughs> you know, comics creators having to deal with, you know, characters on a month to month basis in that regard. Yeah, I know I keep saying it. I don't think anyone else besides me is reading Mark Wade's stuff these days at uh, Marvel, but he's doing some amazing work on the Avengers and the Champions. Mm, yeah, uh, he is, he'll be writing. Yeah. Oh, hey, Steve's reading it too. Cool. I'm not the only one. Oh, I've always been a big Mark Wade, Mark Wade fan. I'm actually really looking forward to him on uh, Captain America again. I was about to say that very thing. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I really liked him back in the day when he wrote it for just a bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. that with, be fun. with Craven showing up in the next couple of issues. Craven the Hunter? Yes. Craven is going to be hunting Captain America. Huh. I, really I, thought been... I thought Craven was dead, so this is the last right. idea. But there, there, That's there you going go. to go really poorly for Craven. <laughs> I've really been enjoying the, um, the the take on Craven and Squirrel Girl. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll be very different in Captain America, though. But, uh, <laughs> Squirrel Girl's kind of all off in its own own sub universe, where you know she can talk Galactus down, Galactus down, just by finding him a planet full of acorns. And um, I really like that, but. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, hey, guys, um, I need to wrap up pick up my kid from daycare the way I usually do uh, about 430 in the afternoon mountain time. So, um, Steve, I've asked everybody else, do you have any closing thoughts uh, before we wrap it up? I, like I said, I'm uh, really glad to see how uh, things have developed. And I, I hope everybody else, uh, you know, enjoys and getting a chance to, you know, take Freedom Sage to its next stage and, you know, do whatever, you know, they're going to do with it. Cool. Uh, so fourth ed. When's more gonna see that? Oh, don't even. Don't even start. Oh no. 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 <laughs> oh. So one last quick. Oh, yeah. Sorry. One last quick thing before we go before we go off the air. Uh, December will make thirty years that I've I've been friends with one of the greatest human beings I've ever met, Mr. John Manaha. And and John Manaha is if you, mm. if you if you know him outside of being if you know him outside of being him personally, you know him as the timeline guy, the, yes. you know, who saved many a Shadowrun rider and later on many an Eminem rider. And I'm so so happy that he, that the insanely detailed Eminem timeline that he put together uh, made it into the book. So shout out to my beloved yeah. best friend of thirty years, John. Absolutely. John's saved my bacon on at least two occasions with two different timelines. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Um, well, hey, uh, to our listeners, thanks for tuning in. Uh, everyone has submitted a question. Uh, appreciate that. And um, all the panelists, thanks for coming out. And we will catch you next time on the Banff Podcast. <laughs>